How do you do a service call? Where do you start? What's the conversation with the homeowner look like? And when you get here, what tools do you need? And how do you figure out the problem? Today is a start to finish guide of what a service call actually looks like. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, this is Taddy Digest. Let's get started. Before you arrive at the house for the service call to look at maybe the air conditioner because it's not cooling, there's a phone call that has to be made, right? If you're not the dispatch, then you have maybe a secretary that's in your office that receives that call. Hopefully it's a, a polite, pleasant person and it's a good experience from the very first step, which is that phone call into your office. But then you need to make a phone call out, right? To make sure the homeowner's available. So that phone call may look like, hey, Mr. Trout, this is Tad with Fuller Heating and Cooling. I was calling to see if you're available so I can come out and take a look at your air conditioner, right? Or it could look like, hey, Mr. Trout, do you have a second? And they say, sure or no. Usually it's sure. Who is this? You say, this is Tad with Fuller's. Gonna see if, you could, if you're available so I can come out and take a look at the AC. They're gonna say, oh, thank goodness, that's great. I'd love to come out and take a look. So that's what it looks like for a phone call with me. Immediately after they say I'm available, I say, all right, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Or I'll be there in 15 minutes because I've looked up the address. I've looked at the directions, my maps. And I know how long it's gonna take. So right after I say, hey, Mr. So-and-so, this is to have fuller heating and cooling. I'm here, I'm available. You're my next call, something like that. Can I come out? Sure, all right, I can be there in 30 minutes. Is that good? Great, all right, now we're here. What are we gonna do next? We got a package gas unit we're about to work on. Here's a little tool bag that I bring out with me first with a few tools. What tools? I've got my gauges. I've got my drill. I use a quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 bit usually. Here's my multimeter. Got a pair of gloves, wire strippers, adjustable pliers, Phillips, flathead, and temperature probes. Make sure you ask the homeowner what's going on either on the phone before you go or when you get there first thing. Say, hey, is it blowing air out of the vents? Have you cleaned or replaced your filter? Do you have any of the vents in the house closed, the supply vents? Is the outdoor fan running? Do you know? That information is gonna help you. Now, let's go turn the thermostat on to the cooling mode. If the homeowner says they replaced the filter or cleaned the filter, do you check the filter? Yes, you check the filter. Why? Because they may have replaced it. They may write a date on it. Some people write a date on it and they may replace it every three months and they may not expect, expect it to be actually dirty or filthy. I've had that happen. So make sure you do your due diligence because that's going to keep you from running in circles. Because what if it is the filter, but you just trusted the homeowner and then you spent so much time outside, maybe you even put refrigerant in it because you thought it was low, because of course, low airflow is gonna cause low suction pressure. All right, thermostat, let's turn it to cooling. Also turn your fan to on. Maybe you need to turn your fan on. All right, 68, let's go outside. Let's check it out. We come outside, we can see the outdoor fan is running. That's good, I can hear the compressor, but I asked the homeowner what was going on with the AC and they said, there's no air blowing in the house. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take off this panel. This is a Goodman. Let me change my bit. Five sixteenths. One, two. What will cause it to not blow in the house? Could be the fan motor not spinning. Could be ductwork issue. Could be indoor coals frozen or dirty. Oh, looks like our fan motor is not on. Let's spin it, see if it'll spin. Oh, look at that. It'll spin, look, it's spinning now. So we need to check the capacitor. Uh, it could be the capacitor, it could be that it's a bad fan motor. Obviously it's working now. It's not blowing very fast though. Does it have the correct voltage? Let's go ahead and pull the plug first. Notice when I opened the disconnect, I was kind of like back like this because I'm always afraid wasp are just boom. <laughs> All right, capacitor first. Let's put our meter on MFD. All right. 
I'll go ahead and take out the capacitor. All right, here's our capacitator. It's rated for, looks like 10. All right, take the wire strippers. We got, all right. Put the leads. Look at that. Reading zero, guys. It's just a bad capacitor, but fan motor could still be going bad. Blower wheel could be dirty. Indoor coil could be dirty. We're gonna go ahead and replace the capacitor, but I'm gonna check the amp draw on the motor. Then I'm gonna pop the top and we're gonna see if that indoor coil is dirty because that can cause uh, that capacitor to go bad, putting stress on that motor. So if we replace the capacitor and we get it running, it doesn't mean we actually fixed the uh, cause because this was the effect, right? There's always a cause and an effect. So don't just, effect, don't just fix the effect, fix the cause. Now let's go ahead and get a new capacitor. Old capacitor, out of here, baby. We got a 10. All right, now power's still off. Make sure you know how to wire it. It's easy, just take a picture or learn how to read schematics or just put the wires back where they were. All right, now, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that right there just so we can see. Just so we can see. Always strap your capacitors back in though. Never leave the capacitor unstrapped. She's back in. Of course, we probably have to wait for a delay for the thermostat, so five minute delay, and uh, we'll be right back after this commercial. All right, how many amps should we expect to see on this motor? It says locked rotor amps, LRA is three, and then our run load amps looks like 1.85. All right, so we're gonna get a meter. We're gonna check the amp draw while it's running. So our indoor motor is spinning. Looks like it's working pretty well now. So we're gonna take and turn our dial to AAC, hit the select button. We're gonna be able to measure the amp draw and see if it's around 1.85. It should be lower than that. All right, so measuring the speed wire first, which looks like they're using maybe the blue speed, which is medium. Red is low, black is high. Also, I decided to go ahead and uh, mount the capacitor. 1.6 on our speed wire. So 1.6, that looks really good. Now let's measure our common wire, which is purple. This is the other side of the line, 1.5. Now, if you want a more accurate reading, uh, put the panel on. But it's gonna be kind of hard to measure, right? If the motor was drawing high amperage, it would be getting hot. And eventually, it's going to burn up that motor. We don't want that. Now that the motor's running and we know that it's not pulling uh, more than it's rated for, for the amperage, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the power and I'm gonna take the top off and take a look at the coils. We got the screws out of the top cover. We've got the screws out for the coil guards. If we need to clean those coils, we need to take off those panels. And then I took off these panels. Why? Because somewhere we're gonna find our condenser fan motor wires and we're gonna be able to take those wires loose so that we can actually lift the top up and off of the actual package unit. So, because can't lift the top because we got wires connected to this motor. So here we go. All right, there's our wire. Oh, what is this? Dude, look at that. That's the compressor wire. It's almost rubbed through. I'm gonna definitely put some tape on that, reroute that. Our wires for our fan motor come uh, into this panel. And it looks like here they are. So we're gonna take the black, the purple, and the brown out and then route them back through here. Ah, there we go. Now, we can take this panel off like this. Ah. 
Oh, we got some wasp. Wow. Oh, this coil is dirty, man. Yeah, is. We, we got to clean this coil. And then look here. This coil is dirty as well, especially towards the bottom. It's packed. So this could definitely cause that motor to overheat. All right. Well, let's get some coil cleaner and a water hose. Start cleaning. Here's the coil cleaner I'm using. Tri-Power, new Calgon for evaporators and condensers. I'm using the coil gun because this pre-mixes. So easier. So I'm gonna soak this. I'll use it either inside and out. Looks like we got some thin damage. So if I've got a straightener, I'm gonna try to go ahead and straighten those fins. I'll spray the inside as well. Ooh, look at all those leaves. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this indoor coil. Look at that. It's gonna smell so good in that house. And also, make sure you got a shot back. In case you got a shot back, any of that water out of there. Uh, and that may be the, want, the way that you want to get these leaves out. I mean, you can reach in here with a glove, you know, and get them out, or you can use a shot back, whatever you decide. I'm gonna go ahead and take these leaves out, take a look before I take them out, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean this coil and you'll see the after. It's gonna be nice. Take a look at all these leaves. I mean, look at how many, how much, look at that, man. Needs a severe cleaning. Then we're going to check the charge. I'm also going to wrap this wire up. It looks like it just needed to go behind, actually. So there we go. All right, I'm going to get to cleaning. If you don't know how to clean an air conditioner, go check out my video in the description called How to Clean an Air Conditioner. You'll learn everything about cleaning an air conditioner, and then you'll be able to clean one. Look at that. Look at all that dirt. Look at all that. All right, I'm going to get this clean. We're going to get the unit back on in the cooling mode. Look at that. That is dirty. Oh, make sure that you clean the panels off, of course. Got to clean the panels, too. So we hit it from the outside. Check this out, though. Hitting it from the inside. Check this out. Look at that. Look at how dirty it still is. All right, let's hit this coil a little bit too. Look at this coil right here. Look at that coming off there. Look at that. Look at the difference it makes. Make sure you check the heat exchanger while you got the top off to see if it's busted. It's looking a lot better. We got all the panels back on. The unit's been cleaned. It looks a lot better. It's going to perform a lot better. I let the customer know what was wrong and said that your electric bill is going to go down the following months because when it's dirty like this, it costs you money. So before we plug in the disconnect though, I want to make sure that I take out the capacitor, the dual capacitor for the condenser fan motor and compressor. So we got a red wire on the hermetic terminal. Uh, well, that was the common yellow on the Herm and the other wire went to the fan terminal. All right, MFD. This is a 60 slash five. So we should read 60 between Herm and C. What do we got? 44. Wow. All right. So immediately this is no good. So 60 and then plus five or slash five. So between C and F we should be reading five. We're reading three. Beautiful. So we got to replace this capacitor. Otherwise, we're going to be back. And also, uh, let me know if you are one of those technicians out there that loses all the screws and you don't get all of them back in the panels. Um, if you're that technician, let me know. Uh, I've been that technician before. Uh, I sometimes I always lose at least one screw, but I try to get them all in. So let's get this capacitor replaced. Let's check out the new capacitator. 
So MFD, of course. Now let's go in between C and H. We should read 60. What are we reading? 59.4. So that's pretty good. All right, now C and F should read 5. And we're at 4.9. That's better. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug everything back in. Plug in the disconnect. I've got my gauges hooked up. Let's check the charge. Got the gauges hooked up. Let's check out our low and high side pressure. Low side is 74 and the saturation is 43. High side is 230 and saturation is 110. All right, so now to get the super eat, we are going to subtract the saturation, which is 43, by the suction line temperature. So what do we got? 43 and let me lift it up so you can see it. 66. All right. So 43 and 66, that's 23 degrees. Now let's check our liquid line. 101 and 110 is 9 degrees of subcooling. So 23 degrees, I think, of super eats, what I said, and then 9 degrees of subcooling. Looks pretty good. This is a very old unit. This is probably 20 years old. Super Eat, I like it to be around 15, uh, but let's go check the supplier temperature, figure out what our uh, temperature split is, and uh, just see kind of how cold the air is coming out of those supply vents. So just want to mention that I've got my gauges, my hoses routed through this panel here, and I'm keeping this panel up against right here. Uh, that way I don't have air going around the condenser coil affecting the pressures. Every time we pull this panel off, it sucks the air through here, and that affects the pressures. And my suction line temperature is actually 63 now, so 63 and 43, that's 20 degrees super heat. So just by leaving this panel on, we're affecting the temperature and the pressure. Just want to mention that before we go inside. All right, let's check the return air temperature, which the thermostat's right above it, so I'm just going to take this temperature as the return air temperature, 75 degrees. Now, we're gonna measure the supply air temperature. Now, what are we looking for for a temperature split? We're looking for in between 18 and 22 degrees. So hopefully we see around 55 or 56 degrees here. So it looks like we've got 54 degrees. That's great. So that means we've got a 21 degree split. So the unit's working great. All we had to do is clean it replace some capacitors. Now I am going to, I did check the bearings for both motors, indoor and outdoor fan motor. If you don't know how to do that, I've got a short video, I'll put it down below so you learn how. Uh, but I'm gonna admonish the customer and I'm gonna give them a uh, price on a new evaporator fan motor and uh, tell them that if they replace it now, they don't have to worry about it later. Because anytime you replace a capacitor just for a fan motor, uh, you may have a fan motor go out later on. Now, sometimes I've gotten away with a capacitor for a motor and it lasted another year, and that's great. Uh, but just know, if you have an older unit like the, this one that doesn't have pressure switches, low pressure, high pressure switch, say the outdoor fan motor went bad and the unit just kept running, right? High head pressure, can't reject heat, and then washes the oil out of the compressor, uh, compressor could go bad because of that. Remember, cause and effect. So, but this one, just clean the coils, couple capacitors, it's rocking. I love it. R22. Let's keep them going. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, remember questions can lead to new content. So put your questions down below. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You want more videos like this? Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience as a technician to help you be a better technician. So go take advantage of that free content. If you like today's video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell. Ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, this is Taddy Digest, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.